Sup guys, Hate King here, bringing you another live reaction to this month's Boruto. So I did say I was going to start trying to react to these. And yeah, chapter 56 is out now. And we're gonna react to it, which means I'm gonna read it and react to it, you know, etc, etc. By the way, new glasses. I like the frames. They're cool, aren't they? Uh, yeah, Attack on Titan ends next month. Obviously, I need a new series to pick up to fill that empty void that it's gonna leave. So Boruto, Boruto is the obvious uh, is the obvious candidate for this. Uh, it was either that or Black Clover, I think, or My Hero Academia. And to be honest, I'd rather sit and watch the animes for that instead of reading the mangas because I don't read the mangas for that. So yeah, I wanna I wanna be a patient little bunny and wait for the anime for those to come out. So yeah, let's uh, let's read the. Uh, the chapter for this, so yeah, uh, it's out now, so might as well, might as well go for it. Uh, apologize for that little tick of lighting here, which is very annoying, and and you can see that just going down. I, I can't fix that. Jesus, maybe maybe I should turn on the light there next time. Next time, I don't want to keep getting up and rushing and cutting all of this crap out. You know what I mean it's it's irritating. You're just gonna have to deal with it for for this one time, okay? So yeah, let's go for it then. Uh. Our cover page is Sumire, 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 yeah, and the chapter is called Code. Oh, so I guess we're gonna get a lot of code action, I guess, uh, this time around. Let's see if I can put the, okay, let's go for it. Oh, is it? that's annoying. What's this like? Okay, that's weird. Can I? I can't see my face! Ah, sorry, guys. This is really irritating. Oh my god. Okay, screw it then. You can't. You can't see my. Okay. Okay. We're gonna have to do it. We're gonna. We're just gonna have to do it like this and pray to God I'm in the frame. Wow, this is annoying. Because I'm using the uh, photo booth to record this with my uh, HD cam webcam that I got. And it just makes life so much easier instead of just getting the camera and sitting down and having to pause every few minutes. Do you know what I mean? Like with this, it's like it can record continuously and. You know, so yeah, let's just, let's, let's, let's just do it, okay? Okay. Why is it so small? Alright, so the first page is of the Hokage statues. Uh, now, now, modesty does not become you. So there's some dude there who's talking to Boruto. It was your cleverness that kept the damage to our village minimal, wasn't it? Uh, was it? Uh, 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 which basically makes you the one who saved the village. All right, so they're referring to the fight that just happened, I guess. I guess it's true. Boruto's like, uh, it really wasn't all that, you know. In fact, I was passed out most of the. And what's it called again? That awesome jutsu of yours that swooped down and swallowed that notorious Otsutsuki Hall? There are actually quite a large number of people who witnessed it happen. Oh, uh, that's, uh, that's the, uh, I wish this were over already. Oh, Boruto's thinking about this. Yeah, he, he's clearly not comfortable giving this kind of news to people. Like, uh, it's so weird that uh, that, that that Konoha has has news channels and that now. It's always crazy when I see how modern everything became. Uh, I'm I'm rewatching through Shippuden now. Like, I just got into Arc, arc uh, Six, the Itachi Arc. Uh, it's it's just fun going through all of those again. I just finished the Kakashi Chronicles. I'm watching it with my mom in it, and uh, yeah, she just got she just. Got a first taste of Obito, so I'm trying to keep it very down the level, like, uh, trying to remind her of all the main names, main people that she has to remember, like, all the little foreshadowing in there, but yeah, it's crazy, man, it's crazy where we were going up to when it comes to this, like, when you compare Naruto and Boruto together, it's, like, so different and weird, and yeah, it feels very organic, the same. Anyway, we're cutting to another part of the village, and, uh, we're with, uh, Amado, and he's, uh, putting on an arm, oh, he's fixing Kawaki's arm, hmm, not bad at all. He's Kawaki's in a room with Amado, and there's uh, Dr. Ketkutsuki, is it? With Sumire. How about the rest of you? Any points of concern this last week? Not really. It feels just like my old hand. I'm speechless. I didn't expect him to regain his hand so quickly, and without any sign of rejection. Uh, that's Ketkutsuki saying that. Good for him. Amado, man, that guy's got so many lines now, so much dialogue here in these panels, and he's smoking a little sick, sick there. Of course not, not, of course not. There wouldn't be 
there wouldn't be as it's a genuine article engineered from it from his own cells from his own cells so what then use kawaki's own cells to make this new arm just one of the spare parts i'd made before coming here this wouldn't be possible if you were an ordinary human and his whole body not a and his whole body not a scientific ninja tool so amado created a new arm for kawaki using his own cells but he had a spare line around what okay that's a bit weird the guy became very prepared if that makes sense I still suspect Amado's up to something, man. Like, uh, he had a spare arm. Like, what if he uses that to control Kawaki? Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it, this guy is sus. He's sus as hell. I don't trust him one bit. I don't. Okay, he's he's going to have to do something truly amazing and incredible for me to even be like, I trust you, dude. You're, you're cool. But he's cool. I don't trust him, though. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's just there's something off about him. So now we're cutting to Sumire. He's got an injection out. Sorry, Kawaki. This is going to sting a bit. You know I'm not a snotty-nosed brat. You don't need to keep saying stuff. J just do whatever you need to do. Oh, s s sorry. Oh, Samurai getting a bit... Getting concerned there. What's with your attitude, Amado? Acting all bossy and having an assistant. Isn't Sumurai one of Dr. Kataskuski's staff? Why is she with you? Thank you, Kawaki. But this is what Sumire herself wanted. We were all at a loss when it came to treating your body. It'll be good to have another member on your care team, right? So, how do you say his freaking name, man? Um, Katas Katuski, Katuski, Katas Ah, sorry about that. God damn, I screwed that up, didn't I? Kitkutski or whatever. Uh, okay, whatever. So Sumire is working for Amado then. Okay, so he's, he's, the co-op is just silent. I still only know the basics, but you can rest assured from here on out. Of course, avoiding injury would help too. Besides, you're always hanging out with Boruto, so can I ask you about him too? Who? Who? Kawaki's like, wait a sec. Do you like Boruto or something? Brap. Oh, Sumire getting red-faced. Uh, Kawaki, uh, don't say it so bluntly. Let's keep it our little secret, okay? Uh-huh, and Ka Ka Katatsuki's like, uh -huh. though it's so very obvious. Okay, so what? They're setting up... They're setting up this love triangle now between Sumire, Boruto, and Sarada. It's pretty obvious that, uh... Sarada likes Boruto, and Sumire likes Boruto now, obviously. I always hate this when it comes to shipping and that. I mean, sometimes it's very obvious from the get-go who's going to end up with who. Like, with Naruto, like, it was very obvious uh, Hinata was going to get with Naruto, because uh, they set that up, okay? They set up that uh, Hinata wants to grow and become with, and get with Naruto, and they set up Sakura liking Sasuke and wanting to be with him, okay? It's, it, 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 in Naruto's case, it was a case of... That's what the girls want, and that's what they got in the end. That was their mission, that was their goal, and they got that in the end. And then you have something like Bleach, where everyone was like, oh, it's obvious that Ichigo and Rukia are going to get together. And it's like, no, because technically speaking, Orihime was uh, sipping for Ichigo, and Renji was sipping for Rukia. So, you know, uh, you know, you already had those sort of relationships established in a way. And, it, and as the arcs went more and more, it, it kind of became obvious who was going to end up with who. So it was no surprise. And suddenly people lost their minds when, you know, it didn't turn out the way it did. Especially when it came to Tokyo Ghoul. Like, it was pretty bloody obvious that uh, Kanaki, for example, was going to get with uh, uh, Tokyo. But no, everyone's like, oh, no, it's going to be uh, Ken and then uh, uh, Hidan, Hayden, uh, Hyde. And it's like, what? Why? Like, like they're best friends. Like, what, two guys can't, be, can't just be best friends. They have to be close together. And suddenly, like... That didn't happen. Everyone lost their minds. And it was like, like, and they started burning their manga copies. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Like, it's always, always obvious from very early on who's going to get with who. The only thing, the only series where they don't make it obvious where the relationships are or who's going to get with who in a relationship is One Piece. Because that's a that's that's a manga where even even the manga is like he, he even says it, it's the, the you know romance is not the main focus when it comes to One Piece. Like so. That's that's like over the hill at the moment. You don't know who's gonna get with who. You know, personally, I'd like Luffy and Nami to get together, but obviously, it might not happen. And I'm not gonna lose my mind over it if it doesn't. Do you know what I mean? It might it might not even happen. None of the characters might get together. That's fine. I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. But if it happens, it happens because you know there's a nice little build of a build up and relationship and developments between them. Do you know what I mean? But it, you know, it doesn't mean I'm gonna take my manga copies and burn them if it doesn't happen. So it's always ridiculous when shit like that happens. Anyway, Lex panel, my god, page seven, six to seven. Um, Kawaki's putting his jacket on, whatever, it's no matter to me. So, as long as you're able to do your job, and Amada's like, he's taking his love, excellent progress. I don't anticipate any big problems from your hand, but don't shrink 
don't shrink the routine maintenance. Come back here next week. Can I go? Yeah, can I go? Kawaki, as he's leaving, and uh, Kawaki and Simurai are just like, no, never mind. Let's do it next time. And Kawaki's just like, hmm, question mark, whatever. And he's leaving, and Simurai's just looking at him leave. Okay, this panel with Simurai here looks super weird. She looks like a toad man with a big bug eyed eyes. Like, the art here is, the art here with her is, is, is terrible. That's very terrible art. Like, what the hell is going on here? And then we're cutting to that dude, oh, the newspaper, uh, the news dude. Unfortunately, it appears we are out of time. Everyone, please give another round of applause to the tiny but mighty hero who saved our village, Uzumaki Boruto. <laughs> ah, sharks and ah, Boruto, you little, you little shit. <laughs> and there's Sarada just chilling in a in a sofa with a pillow, like hugging a pillow. Jeez, really, Boruto, acting old moonstruck. And there's Shikadai watching the news, cut him some slack. He's putting on a brave face, but he's more desperate. He's more des de depressed than any of us. Uh, Sarada's just like she's realizing it. Like, mm. Oh, she is. Sarada, they're all in a room, in a square room. You know, they're all sitting on the couch. There's there's Shikadai, Inojin, and Chocho. Oh, and Mitsuki and Sarada are there as well. Uh, they're keeping, they're keeping the stuff about Karma and his rampage under wraps to avoid causing mass panic, and he can't go on missions because it's too dangerous. He's being secretly watched around the clock. Pretty unbearable, if you ask me. Sarada's like, yeah, but the no missions rule is applying to us too. We don't have a free man cell without him, so Team 7 is on indefinite hiatus. Oh, okay, so Team 7 is on hold. Wow. Wow, I feel like we're getting closer to the time skip now, guys. Like, I feel we're getting closer there. I mean, with this kind of development, it's like, oh, Team 7 is technically, like, over with, if you will. I keep saying that uh, Boruto is going to eventually go rogue and that, but um, I feel like we're getting closer to that to that potential possibility. So Shigure is like, yeah, that was my dad's decision. Could this hero treatment and uh, pandering him in front of the media be his way of making it up to him? It's so insulting. That does sound, that does feel insulting, actually, in a way. It's like, ah, you can't be a ninja anymore or whatever. You can't go on missions. But here, let's put you in front of the media and the cameras and make you out to be a little hero, you know, just so you're cool and that. Jojo, how? Why? To not have a, uh, do not, to not have to go to, uh, to go on a mission and being on TV instead rocks. Uh, you know, Jay's like, uh, how can you say such a thing in this company? This is, this is why, Chubbs. What? Uh, Jojo just grabbed energy and is like, what? Like, what's my weight got to do with it? <laughs> Zara just like, don't get, don't get me wrong. I'm not blaming Boruto or anything, but it's just hard to come to grips with that's with, with that's all. What's gonna happen next? And Mitsuki's like, well, at least in regards to Boruto's karma, they just can't, they, they can't just sit around and do nothing. They're gonna need to be proactive. Maybe Master Shikamaru has an idea or two, and Shikamaru's like, one would hope. <laughs> one would hope. <laughs> I'm sure your dad's got something planned, if we'll figure it out. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's Shikamaru. He's always got something figured out or planned. Okay, pages uh, 10 to 11. So now we got Boruto on, the, on Naruto's head statue. He's looking out. Uh, he's looking down, and there's some girls looking up at him. Look, it's Boruto. He's so cute. Ah. Uh, and Boruto gives them a wave, and he looks up at his hand, the karma seal. And he's like, he puts it down. Oops. And there's Kawaki jumping on, joining him. Hey, what a huge bother, this whole celebrating thing. Ah, uh, the two brothers together. Like they're going to have a nice little one-on-one -on -one conversation. What? Go away if, you if you're just going to poke fun at me. Kawaki sits down next to him. I'm surprised. I thought you'd be a bit more glum about karma. Nah. I was over it a long time ago. Let it sink in, guys. These two are right now sitting on the Hokage statue. When we see in the very beginning of the story that it's destroyed and everything and they're on it and they're about to fight. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy symbolism of foreshadowing here. Like, I feel like one could argue that this is the halfway point of the story for Boruto. Like, I feel like, like... I'm just, oh man, I'm just excited to get to that time skip and to see what's going to happen, like, like, ah. Uh. We're almost there, guys, we're just, I feel like we're almost there. Maybe by the end of the year, and then 2022 is like, time skip. Uh, based on what we've learned so far, both of our bodies are about 80% ot otsutsuki-fied already, and for you, and for you in particular, 
the Yotsutsuki data is still continuing to extract itself from your karma. Mm. Now I got in a panel of Momoshiki, and when that's completed, the moment you finish becoming Momoshiki's vessel, you, Boruto, will disappear somewhere. And that bastard will supposedly resurrect in your body. And Boruto's just quiet looking at that karma. It really sucks. I feel like I'm stuck in a nightmare. Oh, Kawaki just gives him that look. I thought of something that you could try doing. Ooh. Does Kawaki have a suggestion? Why not prepare your uh, prepare, Why not prepare your own vessel by giving someone else a karma? Can that even work? Passing on your own karma to someone else reminds me of all those um, horror movies you see where they're like, "You gotta pass the curse on to someone else if you wanna if you wanna live," and it always backfires. Like they think they passed it on, but they know they haven't, and it and it and it just goes wrong. Boruto's giving him a look. My own vessel? Mind you, this is only a, hypo a, a hypothesis that I just came up with. But if Momoshiki resurrects and you end up disappearing, if you had your own vessel somewhere, maybe you could also use it to reincarnate. reincarnate. Hmm. And Boruto's just like, he's getting very shocked faced. That's one crazy theory. Besides, if I'm going to give karma and make a vessel, that means I have to sacrifice someone else, right? No way, man. His name is Cold. The only other guy to have survived Jigen's ritual. I was about to suggest. I was about to say, like, maybe Boruto can, when he's fighting Cold, maybe he can do something and pass on, pass it on to him. And then when Momoshiki comes out of Boruto, Boruto can just come out of a uh, Cold or whatever. Like, Jesus. So Cold is the only one to have survived Jigen's ritual. And now we're getting a panel of Cold. Jesus, we're on page sixteen, seventeen now. Like, there's Cold, and he's going through, he's going through some snowy environment. There's a building there, like uh, in, uh, located into one of the into the iceberg or something. And now we're cutting back to Naruto and Amada and Shikamaru. Oh, cold. What sort of person is he? And Amada is just smoking. Is in the Hokage office. He's the he's the last Kara in a left. There are still elders who uh, those are elders those who do external contract work for Kara out there in various regions. But once all the inners are gone they'll essentially cease to function. And Shikamaru's just like, so he's Kara's lone surviving officer. So wait, what about De what happened to Delta? The model shot her down, right? So, uh, but technically, she wasn't killed or deleted. So sh surely she's still around. So technically speaking, Cold and Delta are the last Kara's left. So what's this, what's this bullshit about Cold being the last one? He's clearly not the last one. So he's Kara's lone surviving officer. If we can get rid of him. In addition... Code was entrusted with guarding ten tails in that secure hideout in the other dimension space. After Sasuke infiltrated it, they went on high alert. Hmm. Cut into a panel of the ten tails. I probably don't need to tell you, but ten tails is a dangerous presence. As long as it ex as it continues to exist, so too does the danger of the planet getting wiped out uh, via a divine tree. It must be dealt with as soon as possible. Shikamaru was like, and yet, Sasuke's space-time ninjutsu has been disabled along with his eye. And Boruto can't really control his power, so even if you got there, there's no guarantee that you'll be able to return safely. And Naruto, this code, he's able to travel freely too and from, this, from that space. And Kamara's like, of course! Of course! <laughs> uh, and Bison, of course! <laughs> uh, he doesn't have space-time ninjutsu, but there are other abilities that make it possible. And Naruto's like, in which case, we need to do something about code before Ten Tails gets m misused. Shikamaru, that sounds. That sounds because once code is out of the way, we can take our time to decide how to dispose of Ten Tails. Hmm. Mardo, you're not wrong. But be careful. Don't underestimate him. Code isn't like the others, he's special. Really. And now we're cutting to that door, I think, in the cliffside. There's some weird patterns on there. Typical hieroglyph symbolisms. And there's some dude in a hood in a hood in a snowy hood waiting weather in a in a cold weather pajama thing waiting. He sees cold walking up. And there's another dude coming up behind that behind the hooded weirded dude. Who are you? Do you know where you are? And Code's like, this is Boro's cult facility, right? I'm an acquaintance of his. Could you just let me inside? Sorry, but Lord Boro ain't here. So go run home. Stupid, stupid. Oh, wow. Uh, Code just took his hood off and his hands transformed into freaking claws, dude. Like, what the hell? 
Then again, you'd have to be dumb to be gatekeepers in this freaking freezing back country. Halt! This is your last warning, yeah, before you die. Uh, and now we're cutting to uh, Boruto and Kawaki. Jigan's ritual? What do you mean? Remember what I told you about when I was first brought to Kara? And we're getting that flashback of Kawaki in those little uh, um, plastic bags, uh, med medical bags, if you will, getting his blood drained or getting stuff pumped into him. Oh, that. It's a ritual to scream Ot Otsutsuki vessel candidates. Lots of kids are given karma, and those who aren't compatible have seizure seizures and die. And there's a shot There's a shot of one guy getting the karma, and I think he's dying, and there's another shot of Kawaki, and he's like, he's pressing his hand there. There were only, and I think there's cold behind Kawaki. There are, yeah, well, so cold was one of them then. Wow, that's so, that's weird. There were only two of us left when it came to my turn. I managed to survive G-Gun giving me karma. I turned out to be compatible. Uh, like I mentioned before, I passed out at, at that point and was moved elsewhere. So I didn't see what happened afterwards. But apparently Jigen gave the last kid karma also. But it failed. Just like the other kids that died, his body started to shake and spasm. He wasn't able to, to become a vessel. Okay, we're getting a tense moment now. Except. Except. And Boruto's just listening intently now. For whatever reason, he didn't die. He survived just like me. He was compatible with karma. Except his karma is white. You can see the details there. It's white, whereas Kawaki's and the other kid was all black. And there's 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 cold. He's got the claws out. He's racing for those guys. Some dude, some dude's pulling out like a minigun pistol missile. I don't know what that is. Like his hand, his hand is like a rocket launcher or something. They're shooting bolts out of it. And uh, Cold is running, like he's running there, like, his belts are coming out, what the hell, his belts are coming out? They're slicing through the, they're slicing through the floor, they've gone underneath the guys and, the, and he's coming in, what the hell? Cold dodged them, he vanished, hey, what are these black hand, black bands? Cold is coming out of the black bands! Like a shadow, he's coming out of the black bands behind one of the guys. Guy looks out, hey, behind you. Oh, he just, it's too late. Cole just stabbed the dude through through the chest. Like, oh my God. So he, he shot these bands out. Those bands that cover his face, he shot those out of his body. And he vanished and he went into them and he came out uh, behind the guy. Stabbed him through the chest. The other guy's shooting a damn it. And uh, Colt uses that guy's body that he stabbed through as a shield. The bolts hit him. One of the bands just went through, uh, just went over this, over the surviving guy, and and Cold's claws just came out through his chest. This is so weird. So the band, what well, the band is on the floor. It's like a teleportation technique, and Cold puts his hand through the band, and the band, uh, the other band is on the guy, and his hand comes out of that. Like, you've worked so hard, you can rest now. No, don't. And and he slices the guy's throat. So like Cold's on the other side there, puts it through the floor, band comes out of the guy's hand like from the chest and he slices his throat like that, like That's just that's just crazy, man. I can't wait to see this get animated. Falls down dead. Oh, fuck. Moving around has warmed me up a bit. So he's going for he's about to he reaches the door, but it's still pretty cold. Let's get inside. This is some long ass chapter, man. So how long have I been filming? 23 minutes, Jesus, uh on to the next panel. So if we're back with Naruto, Shikamaru, and Amada, he can't be used as a vessel, but the karma remained? That's not, that's possible? It's certainly a rare case, but that's what happened. He survived, and as a result, his body retains karma's aspect of being a weapon. Naruto's like, we don't know what makes someone compatible, so anything's possible when it comes to this. Amada's like, exactly, there's still a lot we don't know about karma, and the reaction that took place in Code's body is especially astounding. His combat abilities exceeded even Jiga's. And sorry, I was like, what? Almost every member of Kara has had their body remodeled in order to strengthen it, but it's the exact opposite in Code's case. He's had limiters put in to check his formidable strength in order to avoid the undermining of Jigen's position as leader. So Code is more powerful than Jigen. I think I said this before, like, you'd have to be pretty bloody strong if they sent you of all people to guard the freaking Tentails. So Code is 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 a freaking powerhouse then. Jesus. 
So if, if, if he's more powerful than Jigen and he's had limiters put on him, just imagine how much of a goddamn headache Code is going to be to beat. Holy crap. Holy crap. In short, he let himself be weakened for Jigen? Is he sane? Code was submissive to Jigen. He harbors a kind of religious devotion toward the Otsutsuki. Ishiki especially. He's wor he worships as a god. So Cold bore strong ador adoration for Jigen who had become an Atsutsuki. And for that reason, he nurses intense envy of Karma of Kawaki who was chosen as Ishiki's Ill illegitimate vessel. That's how strong Cold's feelings toward Atsutsuki are. I don't know if I said this before, but Cold's relationship with Jigen or I Ishiki is basically similar to Kawaki's sort of look outlook on Naruto. Like Kawaki looks at Naruto the same way that uh, Boruto, for, for example, looks at Sasuke. It's a very uh, similar sort of sim symbolism of relationships between these various characters and their mentors. Like, Boruto is very devoted to becoming this sort of Shadow Hokage. The way that Kawaki is looking at Naruto and wants to become uh, like him, essentially. Like, he, he he's the father figure that Kawaki always wanted. Versus, you know, the father figures he's had in the past. His real dad or Jigen, for example, who just treated him like utter trash. And then, and then you have Code, who looks at Jigen and he's like, yeah, this dude's awesome. Like, I admire him. Like, he's a dude I want to follow. Like, he sees something in him that he truly, truly loves and cares for. So you can imagine his attitude when, when Jigen probably died. And it's like, like, it obviously deep down probably it, it pisses him and makes him very, very angry. And even more so because Kawaki to him would probably would obviously be sort of like uh, the brother that 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 that's better than him so a cold is like the jealous little brother basically in a way like it's, it's very interesting how the how these relationships and the symbolism of these various characters are if you look at it that way uh so yeah uh that's how strong cold's feelings towards Tsutsuki are actually there were several cyborgs among um, among those i had created that greatly surpassed jigen's power but they were all disposed of as pre-jigen's orders Jigen was like, you, had you built them to take down Jigen? And Mara was like, well, yes. Uh, it was after that, upon taking into account all sorts of scenarios, that I came up with Kashin Kojin. But I digress. To sum it up, Code is an exception who escaped disposal due to his unwavering lo loyalty. He was Jigen's strong right-hand man. If he finds out Ishiki's been, uh, uh, Ishiki's been defeated, he will likely seek retribution. And Naruto's like, then I'll be a target for sure. Worst case, Boruto too. Amara's like, I've been marked since I betrayed Kara. Kawaki as well. And uh, Shikamaru's like, what about these limiters you installed in code? You can't just turn them off with a fort, can he? Oh god, what's he gonna say? No worries there. I'm the only one who can re recite them. Although, if he were to kidnap and torture me, you're in trouble. I'm not a pro like the two of you. I'll n I know I'll break pretty easily. Wow, Amado's just like, yep. If he gets me, I'm gonna, I wanna do whatever it takes to survive. Like I will, I will give in. Like, gah. I was like, fine. We'll keep a close eye on you. Like he's just saying this shit so they can keep an eye on him and protect him. And Naruto's like, all right. For now, dealing with code will be priority number one. I want to share our chrono chron chronology chronology and intel with the other villagers. Shikamaru, make the arrangements. It's Gokage Summit time. Gokage Summit time. Jesus. So we're getting a five Kage Summit. The pain invasion is over. Like in this case, the Ashiki pain invasion is over. And we're going straight to the five Kage Summit. So symbolism. Symbolism, if you will. <laughs> okay, so back to Boruto and Kaki. Naruto keeps looking at that karma hand. I never thought about implanting this in someone else. But now, but now that you mention it, I feel like it's possible. Kawak is like, if we're supposed to be, uh, supposed to become a Tsutsuki, it would stand to reason that we could use their special moves and jutsu like space time jutsu. But this guy Code, he already has karma, right? Is it even possible to give him a different karma? I have no idea. But at the very least, he survived being given karma. That's what's key. If it were so easy for Karma to stick, Jigen wouldn't have had so much trouble. So it makes sense to try someone who's already survived at once. Plus, he isn't anyone's vessel. And Boris is like, for sure. But you know, I'm feeling really re relegant about forcing this thing upon somebody. 
You're kidding, right? You've got no choice unless you want to die. Let me tell you, code. Let me tell you, code is strong, stronger than Delta and Borrow, as far as I know. He's not the type of enemy you'd normally want to go up against. Dad no longer has Karma's power. Borrow's like Dad no longer has Karma's power. Dad no longer has Karma's power. Why is he saying Dad? Like Naruto didn't have Karma's power. Is he saying so? He won't be as strong as he used to be. Besides, we can't just keep depending on him forever. We gotta step up. We train. Duh. Come on, let's go. So Broto leaves, and now we're, we're cutting back to the location that Code is at. There's some old dude. Yeah, I think he's fiddling with a laptop or a computer or whatever, a desktop or whatever. And he looks and he notices Code in. Hey, bug. My lord, if it isn't Code, what are you doing here? On an errand for Jigen? Jigen's dead. Likely Boro too. Hey, now. There's troubles afoot, I see. What's happening? A lot. Things have gotten busy real sudden, by the way. How's e Eden? 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 What? Are you what are you talking about? I'm pretty sure Boro secretly stored several cyborgs here. That Jigen had ordered to be scrapped. Though I don't know his motive. Maybe some ace up his sleeve? Anyway, take me to them. So the cyborgs a model made that was supposed to be scrapped. Boro took them and hid them here? Show them. Anyway, take me to them. Okay. Uh, the old guys, I have absolutely no intent to defy you, truly. But are you certain that Boro is dead? If you're lying, ow. Oh, Code's giving him that look. And the dude realizes he's not hes not kidding. All right. But ex in exchange, you'll pay me, right? So he's typing something on the laptop. And they're going to this room with this uh, cylinder. There's, someone, there's something inside the cylinder. Here you go. What in the world are you stirring up, Code? There's some woman in the cylinder. So this is a cyborg? Hello, Edan. You who knows everything in this world. And that's the end of the chapter. So he went to get a cyborg that knows everything. So imagine, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he needs information. And that's why he went to this specific person. And a model made this. Okay, keep that in mind. So God knows what kind of information he put into them. And borrow. Boro took them and kept them safe for whatever reason, whether it was for his own goal or for models, I don't know. Maybe spare parts for scientific ninja tool bodies, beans? God knows. But Code is going to her, he who knows. I'm assuming he's there to gather information and maybe to learn about Naruto, Sasuke, and maybe others. I'm certain he's going to attack the, the Leaf Village, I think. I think he's going to attack the Leaf Village, unless he's going to pull some sort of scheme where he's going to lure Boruto and Kawaki out, but I think we're going to get Code learning things, and he's gonna go and attack the the leafage straight off, and we're gonna get some sort of pain invasion 2.0 because he's got the ten tails as well. Like, what's stopping him from unleashing the ten tails on the village as well? Like, and Sasuke and Naruto at this point are basically weak. Like, they're not they're not gods anymore. Their 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 abilities for that are gone. Unless 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 shown otherwise, you know, Sasuke doesn't have the Rinnegan, but Naruto doesn't have a Kurama. So. They're like they're ba they're like in base one, if you will. It was a, it was a decent chapter, but uh, mostly it was just dialogue. Uh, we did learn a lot about code, I guess. We did get some somewhat of a backstory for him, so that's cool. But obviously, this chapter is just more set up, if you will. Uh, not a bad chapter at all. I'm just curious how much the anime is going to adapt before it stops and we get more canon, uh, anime canon. Uh, we're already on anime canon actually, but uh, yeah, man, I'm tired. I feel really I feel really sick actually. Not me feeling good. Went to work this morning, came back, and just feel like crap actually. Um my throat hurts, so throat, phlegm, it's, it's horrible. Uh lack of sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry guys, if I'm being a downer. But uh, yeah, that was a decent chapter. Uh, it was a decent chapter. Uh, what manga volume are we on now? Let's see. I made a list here ages ago, actually. Um, there we go. Uh, right. Wow. So we're, 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 we're on the start. This is the start of volume 15 then. Wow. Wow. So, uh, if you guys remember, uh, I, don't, I don't know who it was, uh, Kodashi, I think he, he left, he's not doing, he's not writing the manga anymore, it's Kishimoto now who's the writer for this, since volume 14, I think. So, yeah, uh, wow, volume 56, I mean, sorry, volume 15, and, uh, yeah, the date matches up. 
So it's going to go up to 59 and then volume 16 will start in July. And if, if I believe the aim is to go for 30 volumes. So volume 30, volume 30 would come out in 2026 of, well, it would end in 2026 of June with 119 chapters. Keep that in mind, guys. If we're get if we're if we're if we're really getting thirty volumes, that is uh, curious. I'm curious if that is if that is what they're aiming for. If that's what they're going for. Interesting. Very interesting. Anyway, this technically speaking, I guess volume fifteen would be the halfway point. So it will be interesting to see where, where if we're going to get the time skip and there would be next volume. I'm assuming because it has to happen at this point. Uh, sooner or later, we're going to have to get to the time skip. But the question is of, of, of setting all of these up now, like uh, what Code is going to do. Is he going to attack straight away or is it going to be a case of he's going to get this chick and he's going to start learning all this information and he's going to take his time. Like he's going to like he's going to like learn all of this and then he's going to try and figure out how to attack or how best to attack ready himself before he comes in for the big kill, if you will. And that might that might be a time skip. Yeah, because part of me also believes that uh Part of me also believes that that whole beginning part of Boruto, I've, I've been saying this, I do not believe for one second that Kawaki turns bad. Something's happened, and I'm 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 certain that Kawaki's still a good guy. Something's happened and shit got serious very fast. And uh yeah, I don't think he killed Naruto. Or when he says he's he's gonna send Boruto to the same place, I'm assuming he sent Naruto somewhere to protect him and and something's happened and Boruto's probably probably getting ahead of himself and Kawaki's like, I'm I need to I need to fight my own brother, beat the crap out of him, and send him to where where dad, stepdad is. Because uh, yeah, I don't want him to get hurt. Like I don't want to get him. I don't want to see him get himself killed. And that's what the fight is going to be. It's not like a good versus evil fight. It's a fight between brothers, and it's about them protecting each other. That's what I think is happening. Unless Boruto is the one responsible for all of this crap, and we're getting some sort of reversal story where the hero becomes the bad guy, and and the guy we think is going to be the bad guy is act, ends up actually being the hero. I mean, that would be pretty crazy, right? Uh, but I don't think that's what's happening. I think I think it's just that's what I believe anyway. I believe I think there's another villain there that did all of this that caused the destruction, and and, and those two are just in the middle of it. And uh, yeah, that's what I think anyway. We'll see anyway. We'll, we'll see because I just I refuse to believe that Kowaki would turn bad. You know what I mean? Like. He's got a very he's got his own devotion to Naruto and and the way he is with Naruto Boruto as well. So I just I refuse to believe that. I refuse to believe that he turns turns bad or he gets power hungry. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens. We're still very far ahead, uh, far far behind to what to what we're gonna get. But yeah, hope you guys like my reaction to this chapter. As always, like subscribe whatever, and I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and bye.